last, I come back with another Trezor video. This time it is about the cheap version of the Trezor wallet, Trezor One. In this video, you will see what exactly Trezor One is, important features and price, and Trezor One setup and usage on a Windows PC. So let's begin. Hi there, my name is Christina, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's topic is Trezor One, and in a previous video I said I will make a lot of videos about Trezor setup. Meanwhile, I've changed my mind as I believe it would be a little boring, uh, redundant actually. These two videos about setup, Trezor Model T on a MacBook Pro and Trezor One on Windows, I believe are enough so you get the point. If you have a specific problem, just let me know in the comment section below or as a private message and I will try to answer as soon as possible. That being said, let's talk a little bit about Trezor One, just a few words, and then we will see the setup on a Windows computer. Trezor One is the first crypto wallet ever launched. This is a small device where you can keep more than a thousand different cryptocurrencies. And because the Trezor team works at continuously developing their products, we expect new digital assets to be added. Though, in terms of supported coins, Trezor One has some limitations. There are five largely known cryptocurrencies that you cannot store on this wallet. Cardano, Monero, Tezos, XRP and EOS. But you can store almost any other largely known digital asset that you can think of. If you order a Trezor One, you will receive a small black pack that is sealed on both sides. Mine is not anymore, as you can see. As you open it, you will find the device itself that I've shown you earlier, a micro USB cable, uh, four stickers, a small getting started guide, uh, two recovery seed cards and a lanyard. The price of this wallet is 59 euros, VAT and shipping included. But what do you have to do? First of all, when you connect the device to the computer, the screen of Trezor One will open and tell you to visit the official website at the wallet section. You'll have to choose which wallet you want to configure. In this case, we go for the left option, Trezor One. Before starting the configuration, they tell you to pay attention to the seals of the Trezor One package. At the next step, you have to connect the device, which I did, and check for it. And, surprise, no compatible device found. Changing the USB port and refreshing the page, they don't work. What to do in this situation? If you scroll down the page, you will see a solution. Trezor Bridge. If you hit that link, you'll download a Nexa file that you need to install. During the installation process, you have to unplug the Trezor device from your computer. As you connect the Trezor One device and refresh the web page, you will see the wallet connected. So you can actually start the setup process. Next, what you have to do is to install the latest firmware available. The interface is simple and really easy to use. In just a few clicks, everything seems to be working fine. Then, as you might expect, you will create a new wallet. If with Trezor Model T you can choose how to generate this new wallet using either a classical recovery phrase, either a Shamir backup, with Trezor One there is only one option, a 24-word recovery key. I won't insist on how important it is to keep your recovery key safe, but just be careful to always store it offline in a safe place. Before actually making the backup, something drew my attention. Wasn't the firmware supposed to be the latest? Not sure if I missed something out, but when I exited this section, it said I had to backup my wallet before installing the update. Now, being up to date with all your devices is a very, very good habit. There are exceptions, but you have to know very well what you're doing. As a regular user, having the latest updates on your phone, laptop, computer, hardware wallet and everything else is the safest way to protect your devices and your sensitive data. I mentioned that if you know very well what you're doing, then you can keep an older version of the firmware on Trezor One. There is an interesting story on the internet of a crypto user that has lost access to his Trezor wallet. Long story short, the man managed to lose the only piece of paper where he wrote the PIN and the recovery key for his wallet. He had the device but he couldn't remember the correct PIN and the recovery phrase was written on the only piece of paper that his daughter has mistakenly trashed. After months and a promised help that never came, he managed to recover his funds. How? Well, he hacked his own device. There has been a security issue in the Trezor devices 
and the hacking method was written on the internet you could find the it easily you needed physical access to the device and an older firmware at the same time the company has released an update that had solved the issue so with the newest firmware the hacking method was not working anymore in order to hack his device, our user has to keep his old firmware version and carefully disassemble the device in order to be able to get his PIN and recovery key back. Well, what can we learn from this? Nothing is 100% safe. But hacking a Trezor wallet is also a very difficult task, even when it's your own device. And you get the maximum security features if you keep your devices updated. Now, going back to the backup of Trezor 1, before you actually have access to the key, there are several warnings about it and what you have to avoid. After reading and clicking the agreement button, you can actually move on. For the latest Trezor 1 wallet, the only option is a 24-word recovery key. The words will appear on the device and the counting will synchronize on the computer as you progress. On the device, you'll need to press the right button to get the next word and you cannot go back. Still, when you get to the 24 word, you have to make a check and cannot skip that. In other words, your Trezor One device is going to show you again the 24 words so you can double check if you have written them correctly. It is very important to make this check as the recovery key will never be shown again for security reasons. So take your time and carefully write down the recovery key and make the check. Also, it's important not to disconnect your wallet while writing the recovery key, else you need to start all over with a new wallet. Setting the pin with Trezor One is extremely easy and fast. First of all, you have to confirm that you want a new pin for the device. As you confirm by pressing the right button, you will see on the computer and the device's screen the following instructions. Basically, this means that the square from the Trezor device has a correspondent in the dots from your web page. For security reasons, on the computer you will see the dots only. You will create the link between the two squares and enter a chosen pin. It is recommended to be at least four digits long. As an example, let's suppose I want to set the pin 1234. Then I'll have to press the following dots. Based on the same algorithm, you have to re-enter the pin in order to validate it. As you might imagine, the square from the Trezor device changes. The whole setting should not take more than 2 minutes. If setting up the pin is also an important security feature, the next ones are completely optional. You can choose a name for your Trezor device. This way, instead of writing My Trezor on your screen, you'll see a name that you have set up. This feature has nothing to do with security or functionality, it's just a cool option they offer. In order to do so, you'll enter the name for your device from your keyboard. You'll have to confirm the changing name from your Trezor device and also enter the PIN. Next, bookmark the Trezor webpage in order to avoid phishing sites and subscribe to their newsletter. Send, receive, buy and swap cryptocurrencies. All these are exactly the same as with Trezor Model T as it is the same management tool. So if you're interested in that, please have a look at the previous video about setting up Trezor Model T. What I didn't like about Trezor 1. I answered these questions with details uh, in the Trezor review video, but I will also briefly mention them again. The original cable is super small and it is a micro USB cable. And uh, in the management tool, you have available wallets that are not supported on Trezor 1, like Cardano. This is all about Trezor 1. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below or as a private message. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I'm Christina. Thank you for watching. See you next time.